Greetings friends, welcome. Today we're looking at remote branches in Git and how to help keep your local repository and remote repository in sync. We're going to look at when they're created, uh, how they're created uh, and then how they help us with keeping things in sync as well. Before we do though, if you find yourself enjoying the video, feel free to click that subscribe below and you'll get updates for future videos. Okay, what I'm going to do is create three repositories, uh, two local and one remote. We'll run it all on the PC here, so we won't be pushing it up. Um, okay, so to that end, I've got these three folders here. We've got, a, got the remote, the local, and local one. Um, let's go into remote then to start. And what I'll do, let's just make this bigger. So I'll do a git init in here and specify bear, which means we can use this as a remote. Um, and then I'm gonna run the visualization tool so we can see the internals of it so that should pop up in one here okay it's popped up over here that's cool um i might just move over to this one actually and then this one can come over here okay so at the moment in our remote we've got nothing there's just a head pointer um let's go then into uh into the first local so let's go into a local one and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a clone I'm gonna I'm gonna get clone that that's remote so it was in RAM uh, remote and clone it into the local folder okay and then let's visualize this local one as well okay so let's put this one over here get rid of that okay and there's nothing in that one as well at the moment now I'm gonna do the same with local two Bear, move, bear with me here, it's just good to do this from scratch so we can really know where we are. Um, so we're in local two. Let's do a git clone again of C rem remote and into that folder. And then run a visualization of this one. And did that come, yeah, that came up here, white tool, yeah, white tool. So let's move that one down here. All right, so we've got our three repositories. I'm just gonna um, try and label them. So this was our remote up here. This was a local one. And then this one down here is a local two. Okay, so that'll keep those in sync there. Now I'm gonna need to open up a new folder for each one, um, but let's go into then a local one and we'll add some data to it we'll add a file in here so i'm going to create a new file uh just put the word the text test into text oh, sorry test.txt and we'll do a git add right so this should be in we're in local one um and this is local one up here so here's our new file in this repo uh let's commit it and it will say it's local one initial. All right, so as you notice at the moment, there's still, there's still no sign of any um, remote branches. And until I did that commit, there were no branches, but we have got one now. We're on the master branch. We've got our initial commit, um, and it's got this one file on it, and that's in our local repo. But no um, remote branches at the moment. Let's, and, and the remote branch, is basically a representation of what's in the remote and there's nothing in there so you kind of wouldn't expect a remote branch at the moment because nothing nothing exists up in the remote but if I push this now from local one up to the remote then we might expect something to get created so let's just do a git push from local one okay so you can see it, it pushed it up into the remote here so our test.txt got created and our commit up in the remote and it's on branch master. So our remote knows now about a branch master. So we could potentially want to have that information in our local repo. So in L1, you can actually see up here under head there, we've got a remote master now. That actually got created when we did the push. Um, you can see this internally. If you go into the .git folder, go into refs and then go into um, remotes 
you can see actually go into origin and there we can see there is a master branch so that is in our remotes and that's what this guy is here um, and that the idea with that is it lets us know where the master branch in the remotes is pointing to um, and so that can tell us so say this was pointing to a different commit we would know there's a difference between our local branch and the remote based on checking what this points to and what our current branch points to so we could it would be able to tell whether we're ahead of that remote and we might want to do a push to push those changes up or we're behind the remote and we can do a pull to pull down the latest changes that we're missing um, right let's have a look let's have a look at that and how and how that would work then so I'm, I'm going to try and pull it down now these changes into local two as well so I'll get that folder up here let's go into local two um, now if I run git status there's there's no commits on there it doesn't know anything at the moment but we did clone it um, which means I can do a git pull and that will pull down these changes for us into local two we should see those appear down here in a second okay so here they are and again here in this local we've, we've got another copy of the remote so again wherever it's pointing to we know about it um, what will be interesting to see is how it gets updated how and when it gets updated okay so to see that we kind of we needed we need local one and local two so that we can have a difference between the two what I'm going to do is make an extra change now on local two I'm going to create a new file um, called more.txt and I'm going to add that in so we should see that come up down in here okay there's more.txt and I'll do a commit now as well and so we're on l2 more and we should see that come in and what we'll see now is our remote branch hasn't updated so it's still pointing to the first commit now if I run git status here it will say your branch is ahead of origin master which is this branch here by one commit and that's correct here's our new commit down here um, and origin master the remote is pointing to this one here so we're ahead of it by one commit um, what we can do is now that we know that we can now push that up to the remote so let's do that and it should then update in here the master branch in here should now get the new commit um, and then we'll see what happens to the remote master here and also here as well in the other repository because no actions are being taken up here at the moment um, so I'm going to do the git push from local 2 which is this one down here and we'll see what happens okay so what happened well first of all that data went up to our remote so we've got commit um, local to more here and we've got that more.txt file and it updated the master branch here to point to this new commit also from where we pushed this was pointing over to the first commit here but now it's pointing down to commit two so it's updated the remote branch to match the remote because it could do that at the same time so when I run git status now it will no longer say we're one commit ahead because our master branch is pointing to the same commit as the remote master branch so we're in sync so there's no need to get to a git pull no need to do a git push everything's good what about up here though because we haven't run any operations up here it doesn't know about that change yet if we go back into local one um, so if I come in here and I run a git status it doesn't because we've run nothing that talks to the server this hasn't updated so it still thinks we're in sync um, it's saying yep we're up to date now we can actually ask it to interrogate it and we'll be able to see that we aren't actually in sync even without pulling it down you could do git remote show origin and that will show 
that our local is actually out of date and that we could do um, a git pull to get that latest information because that actually talks to the server still doesn't update anything though so i do get status this is still pointing to the same place as this so it's not going to say there's any changes to be made but we could ask the remote to tell to give us its latest information we could do a git fetch so if i do a git fetch it will pull down the latest information which includes where this guy is pointing which is to a new commit that we haven't got so let's do a git fetch there now well you can see down in level two it it literally pulls down these commits for us they are created locally for us with a fetch they're not merged because the merge would mean our branch points to them but at the moment they're just sitting here with just the remote pointing to them but now this one should again know that there's a difference between our master and the remote master because you can just see that they're both pointing to different things rather than saying we should do a git push this time if i do a git status it's actually going to say we're behind by one commit because yeah we're here and we want to go to this second commit so we could do a git pull so again it's using this remote branch to to make that to determine that information for us and if we do a git pull now which basically just going to do the merge so it did a fast forward merge this master branch will update and point to the second commit and so both the remote and the local are pointing to the same commit so we run git status and it says yeah we're up to date um, so there you go remote branches little a high level overview there of, of of what is done and and what is actually created you know these are physically created in your local branches they don't exist in the remotes because it's just the actual branch itself up there and they tell you whether you're behind or ahead of the remote cool hope that was interesting uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it thumbs down if not but thanks very much for watching i'll catch you next time bye